All right, I'm gonna make a quick video on uh, training tools. <clears throat> kind of different ends on the spectrum here. We've got, uh, you know, your purely positive style uh, dog training, and you've got your uh, more discipline type style dog training. <clears throat> and then you've got, you know, the people that hopefully are in the middle. So you've got your, um, you know, you've got your purely positive trainers. You also have your balanced trainers. And uh, there's a lot of criticism on both sides. So the criticism, the main criticism for uh, purely positive trainers is, uh, you know, as a purely positive trainer, you use, you know, you're bribing dogs, you're, you know, you are, your relationship is shallow, you're not developing relationship, you're not focusing on, um, you know, on, uh, on training the dog real life scenarios. That's BS, it's bullshit. Purely positive dog training definitely has its place. It is, you know, after all, we are operating with two parts of the quadrants as purely positive uh, training approach. That is positive reinforcement, meaning I add po uh, pleasant um, consequences to, in to increase the likelihood and the rate of a behavior. And I'm also using negative punishment, meaning um, if the dog does make a mistake, which they all do, then instead of just applying pressure, you know, what we do in negative punishment is they, you know, they lose the opportunity to earn the reward or whatever um, pleasant things that are happening gets removed, gets taken away. So that's pretty much your purely positive training. So it's not shallow. It's not, uh, you know, it's not bribing. That term is just, it's BS, you know, you're not bribing a dog when you're teaching it to sit with food. You're not bribing a dog when you're teaching it to come to you with food. If you use marker training, you're not bribing. If you use marker training, you're just taking advantage of a huge, huge, um, you know, help, uh, a tool that will definitely uh, cut training time significantly. So, Purely positive training is not bribing. Now, if I go to the other side of the spectrum, if I go into, you know, your e-collars or your prong collars, the criticism here is, well, you know, if you use an e-collar, if you use a prong collar, it means you're an asshole. It means you like to hurt dogs. It means you don't like to train dogs. No, it's not. That's not the case. I use prong collars. I use e-collars and I love dogs. I love my dogs. If I didn't love dogs, I wouldn't have dogs. I wouldn't want to hurt dogs. I use them properly. So it's got nothing to do with me wanting to hurt dogs. That's not what these tools are about. Uh, one of the criticism that I, uh, that you get on, uh, you know, on the, uh, balance trainer side is, uh, well, if you use prong collars or e collars, it means you've got no leadership bullshit. Like what does leadership have anything to do with dog training? Absolutely nothing. Leadership has nothing to do with your skill as a dog training, trainer. You could be a really shitty leader and be an excellent dog trainer. You could be an excellent leader and be a really shitty dog trainer. It's got nothing to do with your qualities as a dog trainer. Okay? So, no, not about leadership. Um, so, both sides, you know, purely positive, if I use... Uh, negative punishment, and if I use uh, negative punishment to stop behaviors, positive reinforcement to increase behaviors, that's excellent. If I use those two, plus I use uh, positive punishment to stop behavior, um, also negative reinforcement to increase behaviors, as well as positive reinforcement, and I use all four of those quadrants, that is great. It's excellent. It's good to do that. So, Ideally, we operate from both sides of that spectrum. We want the dog to love the behavior. We want the dog to also do the behavior when it doesn't want to do the behavior. And that's discipline. And discipline is there every single day of your life. Dogs need a sense of discipline. I want them to love the behaviors. I want them to love training. I want them to fall in love with recalls and heal and down and sit but I also want them to have a sense of duty, a sense of discipline when they have to come back, when they have to sit, when they have to down, when they have to heal. 
in scenarios where it's the last thing they want to do. Okay, so that is discipline. So using these tools, the clicker, using food, a bay pouch, using an e-collar, using a prong collar, these are just tools that allow me to operate from different angles. Motivation, good things, pleasant, and you know, consequences that are not pleasant to get you to stop certain things, to, uh, you know, to do certain things. And that is discipline. You don't love getting up at four in the morning, especially if you've only had three hours of sleep. You don't. It sucks. You hate it, right? But there is a sense of duty to do that. If you're running late, if you have a client that you're meeting early, you get up early. There are things that you have to do that you don't want to do. When you're running late for work and you see a traffic light red, you don't want to stop, but you have to stop, right? Otherwise, there are consequences that are unpleasant. So that's what discipline is. And no, using discipline does not make you an asshole. It doesn't mean you hate dogs. It's just different approach, different type of training. You need both, okay? Uh, just think of these tools as any other set of tools. If you're a carpenter and I ask you, hey, make me a bench, here are your tools. You're probably going to use uh, power drills. You're probably going to use uh, um, screws. You're probably going to use saws, measuring tape, right? Um, a power sander. If, you, if I ask you, hey, carve me a sculpture out of this chunk of wood, you're probably going to use slightly different tools. You're probably going to use chisels, right? You're probably going to use slightly different set of tools. Some of the same tools, but you're probably going to use different type of tools. Um, so that's what, that's what dog training is. Different approaches require you to use certain set of tools. When you approach the training from a different angle, you will probably need a different set of tools. And that, that's what, you know, that's dog training. Now, I know people say, I don't like to be labeled. Why do I have to be labeled? I refuse to be labeled. Sorry, dude, you're going to get labeled, okay? As a dog trainer, you're going to get labeled. If you use primarily food and, and, uh, and that's it, you're going to be a purely positive trainer. If you use that plus you use e-collars and prong collars, I hate to break it to you, you are a balanced trainer. That's what everybody calls you. It doesn't matter if you refuse to be called that. There's nothing you can do about that. They're going to call you that. What are you going to do? I refuse because you stop calling me that. doesn't work that way. So just embrace it. We all fall in some kind of category. And that's how it is.